Over 20% of Americans suffer from some degree of hearing loss, including myself, and the number rises for those over 50. The ramifications of and the solutions for hearing loss. Next on Significant Insights. Hello, welcome to the program. As usual, good to have you with us. Today's program is about hearing loss. As a lot of you know, I'm someone who has dealt with hearing loss, in fact, very severe hearing loss for many years. For a lot of people, it can take seven to 10 years before they're willing to meet with a hearing professional like my guest today, audiologist, Dr. Linda. She has been my audiologist for a lot of years and has walked with me on my own personal journey to find the best solutions for my hearing loss. I'm talking with Dr. Berba today because I believe that delaying treatment is one of the worst mistakes someone can make. Studies show that untreated hearing loss can result in accelerated memory loss and even dementia. So it's critical. If you or someone you love suffers from this disability, that they seek proper care from a trained audiologist. I would think from being a person with hearing loss and being a person who have observed attitudes toward hearing loss, if a person is deaf, that's considered a handicap. Correct. If a person has a hearing loss, it's really not recognized by most other people as a handicap so much as a, nu as a nuisance. You're right. Would you say that would be true? I completely agree with that. I think we look at hearing loss as being more of an inconvenience than a serious handicap. And a lot of times an inconvenience, not to the person with a hearing loss, but to the people who are trying to communicate Correct. with a person who has a hearing loss. And I loss. think that's what sets it aside from a lot of different handicaps. One, it's invisible, so it's not seen. Two, it, it touches the other person's self-esteem. So there's a very emotional component to that. People don't understand. They want to be heard. When they're not heard and the hearing impaired person is not responding appropriately, what occurs They there, take it personally. They take it personally. Which is interesting. Yes, they get frustrated. There's anger involved. They feel that the person's not listening to what they have to say, that what they say isn't important. And then the person with the hearing imp impairment might become, uh, because the person without the loss becomes judgmental, the person with the hearing impairment, um, they become a little bit defensive because the, um, they're not able to understand what the person's asking of them. They have a tendency to feel a little bullied and they'll maybe back out of conversations with couples what happens is the communication breaks down, that intimacy breaks down, there's a defensive mechanism that comes into play. So communication with hearing impairment is difficult. Um, it, it involves our self-esteem and that, that has a tendency to break down. Uh, the person with the loss has a ten tendency to feel a little bit more isolated. What are some of the other health issues that are involved with a person with hearing loss? Hearing impairment, again, is not just an inconvenience. It's a serious health issue. The statistics are showing a very strong link between untreated hearing loss and memory loss. 90% of patients who are diagnosed with dementia have severe untreated hearing loss. So there's a really direct link. Uh, for every 10 decibels of hearing impairment, there was a 20% increased risk of memory issues. Um, you look at brain, um, if you're looking at functional MRI or uh, MRI studies, they're seeing a shrinkage of the brain with untreated hearing loss. So um, it's pretty serious when we think about it. So in a very real sense then, a certain amount of hearing is with the brain. We hear with our brain. Our ear just picks up sound. Um, the tiny hair cells are basically like the piano keys on a keyboard, and we can elicit that sound on a piano, but our brain has to interpret what is what it's hearing. It has to be put into memory. They're finding now that stimulating the brain is very, very important with sound. I have a lot of patients where all of a sudden they get a hearing instrument, but they sit in a quiet room and they're not stimulating the brain with sound. That's an issue because the brain, what it learns, it can forget. 
you know, have you ever learned a foreign language or played a musical instrument? What will happen is if you don't use it for a while, you forget it. Those neural components will die back. And when they die back, we don't know whether or not we can bring them back. But if we don't stimulate those parts of the brain, then what happens is they die back. And our ability to, to utilize our hearing is really affected. Well, being, uh, being a person with a hearing loss, and my hearing loss uh, uh, is, is fairly profound. Uh, I know that a lot of times in a conversation that uh, I'll not really be able to hear all of the conversation, and so I take the portions of the sentences that I understand and my brain tries to process it and then put the rest of that, of those yeah. words together. Correct. Sometimes that works and sometimes it doesn't work, but what happens over time is if you're not careful, you tend to tune out to conversations. So conversations are occurring, but you're not really listening, but you're responding. Does that make sense? It makes perfect Somebody sense. Somebody tells a joke, you have no idea what they said, but everybody's laughing, so you tend you to, go along to, with to, it. To, to, to chuckle at least. Or somebody says something and you tend to agree when really, or, or tend to respond to them uh, because of the fact that you, you don't want to embarrass them. Right, it's a social thing to do. It's a social thing. Correct. But so you, in a sense, you learn to tune out. So and your brain then responds to that by tuning out. Correct. Listening is the hardest thing our brain has to do. It exudes a lot of energy in order for our brain to um, be able to put all those things together. You take a person who has hearing impairment, now they're trying to fill in those sound voids or those absences of clarity. And what happens is by the time you get to be putting it all together, where it tries to make sense of what you heard and you're piecing it together, now when you have to remember what you just heard, yeah. it's difficult because you're exhausted by that time. And what will usually happen is we have a lot of people who use those social skills of just nodding along because you get so exhausted that you basically back out because it's just too difficult to continue to try to piece together the pieces. And, to, and, and, and at varying degrees, then people become isolated uh, from community. Absolutely. And, being part of an active, engaging community is one of the biggest factors for longevity. So think about that. If a person has hearing impairment and they start to isolate themselves because being in a situation is so difficult and non-rewarding because when you don't know what's going on, right, it's, it's, you're not going to enjoy that, so you're going to back out of those environments. Uh, very typical thing that happens with people with hearing impairment. And that isolation uh, is what causes a lot of health issues. It can, uh, people with hearing and untreated hearing loss or even treated hearing loss suffer more depression, more anxiety, more uh, uh, issues with isolation and, and health issues because of it. After the break, we'll talk about some of the hearing devices on the market, some of the advanced technology and what kind of additional communication strategies those with hearing loss can employ. Because I know you might forget, and I don't want to interrupt, if I just do this, that means it's a sign for me, I'm struggling again, help me out. Welcome back. Today, audiologist Dr. Linda Burba and I are talking about hearing loss. One in five Americans have some degree of hearing loss, and for those over age 65, that number increases to one in three people. Now, that means that one-third of senior adults are living with hearing loss. But are you ready for this? Only 20% seek treatment. That's tragic because untreated hearing loss causes isolation, depression, and even loss of mental function. As I experienced myself, one of the first hurdles for a lot of people is overcoming the need to hide the hearing disability from other people. 
I'm sure you recall the first time I ever came to you, uh, which is quite a few years ago now. Um, and if you recall, what I said was the number one priority is invisible. Yes. I don't want them seen because it was, you know, I, I have to confess, it was a, uh, it was an ego issue to me. It was a it, kind of a pride thing. I think what you said was you wanted them implanted in your head. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it was actually quite interesting because after you realized the benefit that it really made a difference in your life, it made a difference in your relationships, that's critical, and, and even being able to do your your work, which is so valuable, um, then we start to see it in a different light. Um, at that point in time, you did. You came back later and says, I just want to hear better. Well, yeah, I said, okay, my, part, my priority has changed. Number one priority, hearing. And that's been my priority since, with all the new technologies that have been available and so forth, that uh, uh, the goal was to be able to hear better because over time I understood that really had to be the goal. And if they were not invisible, it was okay. Well, you have always been very private when it has come to your hearing impairment. And all of a sudden you kind of came out on the show that you had hearing loss, I almost fell off my chair and I thought, <laughs> we have arrived. We finally got to the point where you really appreciated it and, and, and realized the importance. Um, I think, and at that point, we didn't even have all the research that showed how critically important the link between untreated hearing loss and memory loss is. Uh, I say this to many of my patients, if a doc says I'm going to give you a pill to keep your memory going, I would say I would hope they were gummy bears and I'd take the whole bottle. Yeah. Hearing is that. It's, it's kind of like ga gasoline for the brain. It keeps the brain engaged. It keeps the brain, um, those neural connections. Uh, alert and, and active. So for a person who's watching the program today uh, who may be experiencing a hearing loss has been told numerous times that they have a hearing loss and yet has not done anything about it. First of all from a social standpoint they really need to address it and from a health point it could be serious urgent urgent that they address it. What's the first step they take? First thing I would do is get a good hearing test, not just a screening. Um, screenings can cannot necessarily be um, true to life. I, I would basically say get the, get your hearing tested by a good qualified clinic that will be able to tell you and explain to you where that where if there are sound voids or if there's losses there, what does it mean? But today, uh, you know, you pick up a magazine and it said hearing for $200. Uh, a lot of people will see that as a way to correct the hearing. Is that really a direction to go? It's not. I think the industry has actually looked at things and said, you know what, look at the statistics. You know, 80% are not doing anything about their hearing. How can we sometimes make a fast buck on it? Um, hearing is, is very serious. Who I tell my patients who you're going to be five years from now has everything to do with how you hear today. Don't mess that up and be very serious about it. When we choose our options, whether it is technology or not, we want to make sure that it's going to meet your lifestyle. So we ask a lot of questions in reference to what's important to you, because then we can choose technology that's going to be based around what your needs are. But also around your hearing loss. Around your hearing impairment. Because in in my case, important. for example, mm -hmm. uh, for me to have gone out and bought a $200 set or even an expensive set that was invisible uh, didn't have the capacity to really meet my hearing need. So to be able to go in and have the hearing test and find out what I needed and have a uh, hearing, hearing devices that were custom for my particular needs and, as you said, my lifestyle was very important. And it's not just about the widget. The widget is important. I, the widget meaning the hearing device. Um, a $200 device is basically just an amplifier. Our, our more expensive devices are really truly miniature computers that are analyzing information thousands and millions of times per second, changing the environment based on what's going on around you to make it easier for your brain to be able to 
figure out what is being said and to be able to, to process that information. That's, that piece of it is really critically important. Where you're hearing coaches, some people think you can pop the hearing instrument in your ear and, and then you're good to go, but that's not really what happens. You have to retrain the brain to know what sounds are, to be able to process and background noise. The central nervous system it typically takes anywhere from 90 to 120 days for the central nervous system just to get reacclimated to new sound, to know what it is, and then of, of course start to process it. Now even with the hearing devices, what's some other, what are some other strategies that a person can use uh, there to, are a to lot assist of them? a lot of effective strategies. I think one of the first things is try not to fudge it. Try not to pretend. The second thing is to be confident in yourself to let the person know that you have a handicap. People want to be heard. When they're not heard, they don't understand what's actually happening. So I always tell my patients, if you have a problem and you're not getting something, immediately let the person know, you know, I really want to hear what you have to say. It's important to me, but I'm struggling, and you can let them know why, and then give them instruction what to do. I need you to speak up a bit, or I need you to slow down a bit. It doesn't have to be, you know, they don't have to speak loudly. Well, give them the instruction. you know, that's very important. Usually, it does not mean speak louder. It means slow down, speak clearer, so that I can understand and process your words. And uh, it, because the hearing part doesn't always mean louder, it means just clearer. And I think the other thing that people have a tendency with hearing impairment to get tired is continuing to tell people. I say never assume that they're going to remember. They're going to go back to what they're normally used to doing. So I will tell my patients, I would say, and because I know you might forget and I don't want to interrupt, if I just do this, that means it's a sign for me, I'm struggling again, help me out. Yeah. And, and it, what will happen there is you don't have to re-interrupt what's going on. They're gonna see that visually and then get back on the game with it. Um, it's a very simple thing to do. It's very, very effective. And you, again, don't have to keep asking because well, people I, forget. And I think another thing is don't talk away from me. Mm -hmm. Turn and talk to me so that, because when you turn and talk, the sound is going that direction rather than coming my direction. And when you turn and talk to me, we engage. And I can, uh, you know, I, I tend to be able to You need to hear those what visual cues. Yeah, you, you need to see that. You need to see those visual cues. It's interesting because Shirley has learned to address me uh -huh. when she's talking to me by saying, Jerry. And she will address me, my grandson Eli had learned the same thing. I don't know, I'm not sure how he got kids, it that Kids quick. are amazing, they just kind of pick yeah, up on things like that. But he would also, he would always say, Grandpa. Mm -hmm. And he would say it until I, until I paid attention to him. And then he would address himself. And I think that's another way of just making sure Absolutely. that the person who has the hearing loss is hearing what you're saying and you can direct their attention to you because there's also times when they have kind of because they couldn't hear, they're out of the conversation. So the whole conversation can keep on going without them unless they're addressed and bring them back into the con into conversation. So I, you know, those are some of the strategies. Perhaps, I'm, I'm sure there's a lot more, but those are some of the simple things that I've learned. And that worked for you, yeah. which is very important. Yeah. After the break, we'll talk about some of the hard facts and the cost of quality hearing aids and why Dr. Burba feels they're the best medical deal in town. We'll be right back. If we look at who we're going to be five years from now, if we look at our mental health, our cognitive health, again, the dollar amounts that we would have to spend for long-term care as we age, and if we age and now we have more memory issues and more dementia issues, it's perspective-wise, we have to look at the whole thing. If hearing loss is an issue that hits close to home, I hope that today's program has been informative and has encouraged you to seek the help of a qualified medical doctor and audiologist. 
Some people with hearing loss might avoid treatment because of the costs associated with quality hearing devices. And Dr. Verb and I discuss these costs in today's final thoughts. So what is the cost? The cost of hearing instruments will really depend, again, on what your lifestyle, what your needs are. I think a lot of people are a little bit hesitant when it comes to hearing because they'll say, oh, well, they're expensive. Well, this is how I look at it. If we look at who we're going to be five years from now, if we look at our mental health, our cognitive health, again, the dollar amounts that we would have to spend for long-term care as we age, and if we age and now we have more memory issues and more dementia issues, it's perspective-wise, we have to look at the whole thing. If we look at cost of a hearing instrument, good instruments will probably cost anywhere from two to three thousand dollars in aid, and people might say, wow, that's really expensive. When we think about um, even our hair care, but let's get into some other statistics. Uh, Americans actually spend $80 a month on hair care, which I think comes out to something like $1,900 a year. If we look at a cup of coffee, uh, uh, average American spends anywhere from 14 to I think it was $23 per week on coffee, which comes out to I think somewhere around $1,200 a year. Hearing instruments typically last four to five years. When we look at that, we're also looking at the care. Most offices, when they dispense an instrument, will also cover the care of, of that individual, the rehabilitation, the retraining, the coaching, the homework that we like to give our patients to give them better hearing and, and learn to reuse those skills that they've lost. Um, we're, we're kind of couple counselors, too. Yep. Uh, we want to make sure that that individual is reconnecting with the things that hearing has taken away from them. I don't think a dollar amount of a dollar or a dollar fifty a day for better hearing, for better lifestyle, for better communication, for better um, uh, engagement with our family members and those that we love is is that not worth it? Well, just uh, from my perspective, just the health issues uh, alone, not counting all the social issues, uh, would make it uh, worth it and has made it worth it. Uh, you know, I, it, it's an investment that uh, I, I, don't, uh, I don't question. I did question it. Sure. I questioned it at the beginning. In fact, I thought, well, I'll just go with one hearing aid until I realized that that doesn't work. And what did I tell you? It says if we only needed one, God would have stuck it right here, right? Yeah, you know, I need we, one lens for my glasses. We, exactly. <laughs> we use two for localizing. You know, parts of our brain learn to discriminate sound around us, and to be able to do that, we need two ears to do that. You know, it's, it's really disturbing to me to know that only 20% of the 100% people who have hearing loss are doing something about it, because I've learned how important it is, and that's why we want to do these programs. And, and there's been some things that I've done over the years as I've learned more and more about this and how uh, what a negative impact not being able to hear has on the brain function and cognitive functions. Uh, in fact, my wife and I uh, both have devices that put the sound from our TV directly into our hearing aids uh, and we try not to use captions because the more visual we are, the more the brain adapts to that and that audio function, that hearing function is affected. At the same time, I try to listen to more audio books to keep training the brain because we exercise our body, but so often we don't think about exercising our brain. But to those 20% of the people who may be watching this program, and you're not doing anything about your hearing, uh, for the sake of your health, for the sake of your future, you really need to go and get some professional medical help from, a, uh, from a, a, a medical doctor and also an audiologist and do something about that hearing. It is absolutely essential that you do it. Thanks for joining us. God bless. See you next time.